Welcome to another viewer car review. R viewer car reviewer? Anyway, today we're starting off with the Concorde Equinox by Crazy Crafter. And there's not really a whole lot to say about this car. It's not fast. It's not particularly good at handling, if I'm honest. It's just a very budgetable cabriolet front wheel drive car. Actually, hold on, let's double check that this thing is front wheel drive. Oh no, it's rear wheel drive. And for being so slow, it's actually got a pretty decent looking engine in there. It's got headers on a uh, straight six. Weird. I mean, it does cost $26,800. So I'm a little bit surprised as to uh, why it's not faster. I mean, look at that pull away. It's so slow. It, it's not going to be beating any land speed records, but it really does seem a lot like a European type cabriolet. Like it really does look like a Volkswagen from the late early 80s to late 90s kind of period. Quite a cool looking car. I do like it. There is a lot of attention to details, though there's also some detail that's not quite so great. But I mean, he was working with what he uh, knows. He, she, I don't know. How do you genderize Crazy Crafter? I don't know if it's a boy or a girl. Anyway, it's time to move on to the totally original, created by me, Phil Skull. And it's going to get immediately one bonus point for not just being a berserk bonkers car. What we've got here is the sort of car that you would find out in the wild in the real world. So first we're going to start off with styling. Is it a good looking car? Uh, yeah, it looks all right. I don't actually mind these cheap Volkswagens from the era. It's a pretty decent kind of thing, though really that back end there with the area where the convertible would go not particularly well done so i'm going to give this a 7 out of 10 because it's not like your berserk hypercar but it also doesn't look ugly and it just looks very aesthetically pleasing moving on to acceleration on the other hand a 4 out of 10 it's it's not fast it's going it's going and it's still going and <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's not something you want to write to somebody about. Though, I suppose that's like a really old term now. Now you... Oh, I suppose you do still write to people. You just write in very shorter things like in Discord or SMSs or whatever. But still, this is not something you would talk about with your friends like, Oh yeah, the acceleration of my rear wheel drive Volkswagen Jetta convertible type looking thing. Yeah, no, you, you just wouldn't do it. Moving on to handling. Alright, let's find a corner. Got one here, big long curve. Let's see if this car stays stable. You know, a little bit of oversteer. Oh god, okay, okay, okay. I tried to keep my foot in it. Oh, uh, you know what? It's not terrible. Brakes are pretty good. But, oh boy, does it just... Oh god, okay, we got a ooh, bit of a problem with oversteer or power over. Okay. Maybe this one gets a 5 out of 10. It's not completely uncontrollable if you try to drive it normally. Let's get out of the suburban areas here. You don't want them calling the cops on us and then having us get in trouble for driving like a maniac. Okay, you know what? Maybe the handling in this vehicle isn't particularly good. So, yeah, it's still going to get a five. It's not atrocious. It's not bad. It's a little bit fun, a little bit lively, but you're not going to be breaking any sort of cornering G-forces that would, uh... It will wet your panties a little bit. Anyway, moving on to fun factor. I mean, it's convertible, so you've already got like, say, three there. All right, well, that was my fault. You know what, maybe this thing has a little bit of damage. Let's uh, repair this. There is not really much wheel squeal that's going on. This vehicle isn't particularly great, but because it's convertible, that does add a little bit of extra fun, being able to just drop that roof down on a good day, get the wind flowing through your hair, all that kind of stuff. So I would say that this car gets probably uh, six out of 10. As for the cool factor, this is not a cool car. It's got an interesting little bit of an engine in it. Okay, okay, well, we've gone around, guys. whoops a daisies All right, maybe that handling gets some negative one on that. Maybe the ha yeah, handling's not quite so good. And as for the cool factor, yeah, as I said, this is not a cool factor. If you're a girl and this is a girly type car, sure, like, the, the cool factor would be like, oh yeah, cool, it's convertible. That would be about the only thing they know about it. If you're a guy, you'd be like, sure, it's got a straight six, but it's not a particularly amazing one. So it only gets a four out of 10. As for trackability, 
I think we've proven it. It's not particularly great. I'm gonna say that this gets probably a three out of 10. So it's got a, a bit of a mixed bag when it comes to the weekend categories. Nothing particularly high, nothing particularly horrible. It's just kind of very mediocre, much like the car manufacturers intended. They just wanted a good car that people will buy. But moving on to the daily category, features. It's got a convertible, so right off the bat, it's good. Let's get a bit of a closer look here. It has a manual old school radio, so this thing is not going to be blowing anybody's chops. Also, I'd like to do a little bit of a note here. This would be really cool if you angled it this way and then had it fitting in the slots, and then it was like at a 45 degree angle pointing upwards. Sure, you get a lot of dust on it, but I think that would look cool if you did something a little bit more unique. It does look like it has air conditioning, got all of the dials and buttons here, no airbags, so your safety is not particularly great. It's manual and it's got a handbrake. So features, I don't know, four out of 10, let's continue. Moving on to comfort. I mean, you're gonna be a little bit scared every time you try to go around a corner at speed because this thing is not the most stable car in the world, but it does have decent looking seats. They are a little bit sporty. And with those uh, like metallic bits in there, it's a little less comfortable than what you would like there. They do get hot in the hot weather, especially since we're in a convertible here. If you're gonna leave that any sort of amount of time, that's gonna heat up quite a bit. But the suspension itself is also kind of soft, so it gets a five out of 10. No, actually, those seats are pretty bad for a convertible. You get a four out of 10. Psst, ah, let's try doing a burnout. Okay. You know what, when you do a burnout, this thing's a little bit more lively. Moving on to quality, this is a Volkswagen, so the quality is very mediocre. A lot of these things are not going to be particularly great. You got a convertible, so the convertible top is going to die at some point and rip apart, so you're going to have to get that repaired. And just in general, not a, not a good track record. So we're going to give this one a 5 out of 10, right in the middle. It's not terrible quality, and it does take a little bit of a hit because you're dealing with a convertible top that, yes, will tear and pull apart at some point. Handbrakey! Woo! Oh, shit! Oh, no. What will I tell Dad? Sorry, actually. What will I tell Mum? <laughs> Dad wouldn't be caught dead in this thing. <laughs> anyway, moving on to practicality. I mean, it's convertible, so your practicality is already taking a hit because of, like, the security and everything of it. The boot there doesn't look particularly big, also considering that a lot of it's going to be filled with that, uh foldable roof there. The rest of it, it looks like it's got a fair decent amount of space. You got leg room in the back there. I'd probably give this one a six out of 10. Moving on to value, however, uh, the car goes for what? $26,800? That's not a particularly great price if I'm honest. And I'm assuming that that means that this is going to sell considerably less than what you would expect. In this sort of vehicle, you could probably get away with a front wheel drive little four banger engine something just very soft and smooth to bring that price down a little bit. I don't know what the manufacturers were thinking of this car when they were putting it together. What's the market for this? You got a guy's engine. I mean, I know I'm being stereotypically sexist here. I'm sorry, but generally it's guys that'll be buying a car with this sort of engine. But with this kind of body, you're going to be also getting more of a feminine type thing. So really, your only market is twinks. The ongoing costs. Well, you're gonna have to replace that roof at some point or repair it or whatever. I don't know, is it, actually, is that meant to be a hard top or a soft top? I can't tell. I don't know, either way, they're not particularly well known for their quality, so they are going to need repairs after a while. There's not a whole lot here to go wrong. It is a very simple vehicle and simple engine. In general, I would probably give this thing a seven out of 10. So not a blistering overall fill score, but also nothing too horrible. So let's move on to the next one. Also by Crazy Crafter. So this is the Concorde, which is the same brand as the last one, but this one is a C110 S Turbo. And let's have a bit of a look at the engine inside. Got a little four banger and this one was front wheel drive. This one seems a lot more accurate to the time. I do like this a lot. It does have injection as well for a car from 1985. That is, uh, sure, one year too early, but I suppose not everyone would not have that. And it also looks like we've got a single overhead cam here. No, that's dual overhead cam, is it? Wait, I'm confused. We've got two valves for cylinder here, but it looks like there's two camshafts in here. Is that what that's meant to be? That is a peculiar engine. I probably should have looked that up. Like I did, just didn't notice it. Also, it looks like this one was particularly poorly manufactured as they haven't tightened up the bolts for the bell housing up to their engine block. So, 
Hmm. Points off on that one. <laughs> As for the rest of it, it looks like a fun little car. Very similar sort of thing. It's a convertible with a hatchback and five seats. Pretty good. Let's have a look at the interior in here. So we've got uh, a radio. This one has a tape deck. So this one's... I don't know, it's older, sure, by two years, but this one comes with the tape deck. I don't know why, this one seems like it'd be the more budget version, but this one has a better radio on it. Also, it looks like we got climate control, so that's pretty good. The dashboard is... Odd? Is that some sort of, like, high-tech thing that they were doing back in the day? I don't know. We shall see. All we know is, we've got less than a half a tank of... Leuf. Leuf? Leuf. And here we have to be very mindful of our deeps. Oh, is this the brand of it? This is made by Yelpsid Kenortkele? Interesting. I've never heard of that company before. And, of course, our speed is done in hours per kilometer. Does that mean this thing is really slow? Alright, let's take this one for a bit of a run around. I do actually think I like the styling of this one more. He's gone to a little bit more detail into this car. More, more accurate to what you would expect to find from this sort of car. Though it is incredibly lively, skittish, oversteery. I We're also dealing with an open axle, live axle this time. The previous one looked like it wasn't uh, a live axle. It looked like it was actually a proper LSD. Whereas this one could probably do more with it, but what can you do? They got that indicative like turn and getting wheel spin type thing. Oh dear. Also, this car is about $8,000 cheaper, which is a fair chug when you're talking these sorts of prices. This one only goes for $18,200. So this one is a veritable bargain in comparison. It's also got a turbo engine, so it's got very similar power. Can I get out of the gutter plate? Like, God damn it, my driving is horrible. Why am I so bad at this? So let's just move on and start doing the fill score and starting with styling. So I do like the aesthetics that they've gone and tried to make this thing very accurate. But we're judging this up against modern day cars here. So the styling for the front is fairly funky and cool. It does have that cutesy factor, but the back end is let down a little bit. So I'd probably give this a six out of 10 because I like these cutesy little cars. They're fun, cool. As for acceleration, let's get into this flat area right here and do a little bit of a test. Oh, the brakes are not particularly great. And do we clutch jump it or we just drive? I think clutch jump. Nope, there is no clutch. So it's just, oh my god, this thing gets so much wheel spin. Oh, and we're going uphill and we're going around the corner. Well, that didn't turn out great. Oh, dear god. So apparently the safety on this thing is not particularly great either. Oh, I see now why the rear suspension is so lively. That looks like, I, ca I can't remember actually what that sort of suspension is called. It's the sort of the BMW had that was like incredibly dangerous. And then Ford perfected like a decade later. So let's see if we can't find ourselves a bit of a straight road around here where we can just do a good zero to a hundred. Oh, we just did one, 7.5 seconds. You know what, actually, for the eighties, that is incredibly fast. Like, we're talking top-end muscle cars struggle to do that. And that was uphill as well. Let's just go to a downhill and see uh, what we can do in a bit of a downhill. Wow, a five... All right, the acceleration on this car gets an eight out of 10. So we're talking really fast, but we're not talking supercar fast by nowadays standards. We're talking just behind Nissan Skyline sort of acceleration. So, yeah, this thing is not to be sneezed at. I wasn't actually expecting much out of such a small vehicle. I get the feeling that this one maybe have been modified by a previous owner. As for the handling, though, this is not a particularly great handling vehicle. It's sure, it's lively and fun, but that's not for this category. This is the absolute handling category. How does this thing do around corners and stuff? It's not particularly fast, great, or controllable. So, I'm gonna give this a 6 out of 10. Oh god, oh god, oh god, oh god, thank god this thing has ABS, because it really needs it. Moving on to the fun factor, however, this one's a little bit more fun. So you do have the extra fun factor from the convertible, added to the fact that this thing handles really well, and added also on top of that, the fact that you get that adrenaline rush of being like, I could dry a die today whilst driving this absolute death trap of a vehicle. So, it gets a 6 out of 10. 
similar sort of thing with the call factor though this one's going to get a little bit more because this is going to be probably well known by tuners for having just extreme amounts of acceleration compared to what you would expect from such a small car but i suppose it is light so that really does help it in that regard i'm going to give this one a 7 out of 10 for call factor this is really well deserving but let's move on to the trackability. This thing is dangerous and the handling gets really skittish around high speed corners. I'm going to give this one a 3 out of 10. So the weekend category is a bit over the place once again, but still, it's a car that I would suggest is worth owning. Let's move on to the daily categories though, starting with features. The features on this are not particularly amazing. We've got a tape deck and a convertible roof. So, I don't know. We're going to give this one probably a 3 out of 10. It's, it's nothing compared to modern day cars. There's no parking assist, no lane avoidance or whatever you want to call that jazz. It doesn't even have airbags. Moving on to comfort though, this thing is not the most comfortable vehicle. It's a little bit wallowy. The seats are also very basic as you can see. They are not great seats. And also the fact that you're going to feel very nervous going around a corner, which is very uncomfortable if you're not the sort of person that likes to be lively. So this only gets a 3 out of 10. Quality also of these early turbo cars is never particularly great. Also, once again, being convertible, those convertible tops are well known for not lasting a particularly long amount of time. And when they do break, it's going to be quite expensive. Did I just pop a tire? Nope, it just sounded like it. So this one is going to get another 3 out of 10. Not a particularly great score for daily categories so far. As for practicality, this one's even worse. This thing is minuscule. The rear legroom is not great here. And also it's an automatic, so I mean... I mean, how practical is an automatic? Okay, sure. Okay, fine. Automatics may be better for practicality then. Let's just give this one a 3 out of 10. This is not doing well for daily categories. I am very sorry. I love this car. I love what you've done. You're going for an actual style here. I'm going to give this one an extra bonus point for just being really cool, kind of matching the era of car. And once again, not just going for a berserk outcome. Moving on to value for $18,000 back in the day for a car that could accelerate as fast as this one did. I'm going to say that this car is well within its budget. Though, I get the feeling the resale on these is going to be quite high, so it's not going to get a particularly amazing score. We're just going to give this one a 7 out of 10. Okay, manual control. Let's try to dump, uh, like, drive dump this car. Get it in that turbo range. Get this thing up to 100 as quick as possible. And a 6.27. My god. God, this thing is fast. So, I mean, that's not particularly realistic, but you get the idea. Whoa. Is it pulling the rear tires with the handbrake on? <laughs> okay, well, that seems to be maybe the engine isn't quite as realistic as what you'd expect. So maybe I'll remove that point. You've got one there for styling and one removed there for the fact that this engine is not really accurate here. Anyway, let's move on to ongoing costs. This one is not going to be great. You've got here a car which is probably not a particularly amazing seller. Convertibles never do particularly gangbusters compared to like your more conventional type cars that a lot of people require for what it is that they want. Also, the fact that people prefer four doors in most cases. This one's only for like a younger type person that hasn't started a family yet from the 80s. So in the 80s, they would have gone for the bigger car and this one wouldn't have sold quite so well. So that's going to hurt its aftermarket support for things for this vehicle. Also, the fact that uh, you got, the, once again, the convertible roof. I'm going to give this one a 5 out of 10. Because being a turbo engine and being quite small as it is, the thing's going to be pretty good on fuel. So you're not going to be dealing with all that. But then again, you've got these big tires and they are going to be worn out really quickly, especially with that rear suspension. Maybe I'll only give this one a 4 out of 10. But then again, no, we'll give it another one because this is still a mass produced uh, vehicle. Probably this engine was used in another one. It's not like your Ferraris or whatever where they're like really short production runs giving it a total fill score that really doesn't set the world ablaze. This thing got hurt in a few different of its scores a lot worse than what you would like to see, unfortunately. I am very sorry. I do love this car, but can I justify it? Not really. <laughs> Just stop, please. Stop. No, stop. 
stop. Next, I've brought you to a straight bit of road to help deal with comparing these two muscle cars from the same company, just about 20 years apart. So here we've got ourselves a 5.0 V8. And look at that, big individual throttle bodies. This car is big, hefty, and very cheap actually. This is only $20,000. But with those headers on there, this is going to be a very iconic muscle car for its era. However, this is probably the bastard stepson of bureaucracy. I'm guessing what happened here is they wanted a very muscular type car, but they wanted to make the body in a very specific way, which meant that the engine... Notice anything particular here? It is a V8 with headers again, but do you notice anything weird here? Sure, it's injected. Sure, it's got a weird bent over plenum, but this is a 60 degree V8, which is very unusual. Not the sort of thing that you would expect to see in an American muscle car, especially when it's got quad cams. That's not the sort of thing that showed up on American vehicles for quite a bit longer. This is meant to be a 1999 engine. So I don't know if that one's going to be particularly accurate, I'm sorry. But yeah, let's give this one a bit of a drive around. Let's start with the classic car. Now this one is a four door, so you've got more of your family orientation. What I am concerned about though, is those door handles are very close to the door seam. So the reason why you never see door handles right next to the door seam is because you gotta have the door like fold in around a lot sort of stuff. So you should do one that's a little bit further inwards, especially this one here that's not even lined up correctly at all. But let's give this a try. Oh, the engine's off. Hold on, let's uh, turn this one off and this one on. Now, is this a manual? Yes, it is a manual. Also, the engine. That sounds interesting. Let's have another quick check of what sort of engine is in here. No, it is push rod. Yeah, in here you've got the camshaft, so it is push rod. It just sounds particularly interesting. I don't know. I don't know why it sounds different from what you would expect. Maybe this thing has a lot of power. We're about to find out. This is meant to be a 5.0, and the other one, well, that's a 4.6, I think. So very interesting engine design on that one. Let's give this a go. Oh, that's a lot of wheel spin. Oh, that's a lot of wheel spin. And now we're gonna reach 100 quickly. Not particularly. So sure, 8.8 .8 seconds is really fast for the 1970s. I will give it that. But compared to that little hatchback that we just saw a minute ago, it's not blowing my knickers off. Oh, okay, so it's also independent rear suspension. So that's not particularly accurate either, unfortunately. So let's just give the, oh God. Let's just get this thing pulled away from the line. Good, okay. So it does get a nice bit of traction there if you're not uh, clutch jumping the hell out of this thing. We're not gonna give this one a full score though. That one's gonna go to the other car because this is the old car. I brought this one out just so we could compare old to new. And where this is a funky car, it's a little bit lively. We've got a little bit of problems with uh, tail happiness, a little bit more than what I'd like. Maybe a little too much power. Oh God. Oh! But this was a muscle car for the masses. This car somehow comes in at $20,000 in today's money for a retail price. So it's not going to be making anybody particularly disappointed. Boop, back at home. God, even going into reverse, this thing gets wheel spin. Engine off, other car, engine on. Now, does this one have actual, it actually has traction control. Well, let's do it with traction control on. Let's actually have a look at the running gear here as well. We've also got independent rear suspension. So, I mean, uh, at least he's consistent, I'm assuming. This was done by Welp. Clutch jump. Okay. Was that trash? Hold on, let's see. Let's try that again. What is our 0 to 100 with trash control on? It seems fairly moderately fast, not anything blistering. It's slower than the original, though. Anyway, let's get this one a bit of a drive around. Okay, so this one has a little bit more traction than the previous one. You got decent tires on here. A lot of noise coming from here, but we're gonna turn off the uh, traction control because we here at Phil Inc. are not <laughs> cowards. So going around corners, you know, this one looks pretty good. I'm trying to get the thing unsettled, but it's actually pretty handleable. Okay, get back on the road, get back on the road. Okay, you know what? This is not horrible. Let's just start moving on and going to the Phil score. Oh God, okay, well maybe we'll actually see how it goes around this dangerous looking corner first. 
You know what? Pretty good. Slow, but pretty good. I suppose that is very much like a 90s muscle car. Slow, but pretty decent. Like, not horrible, but no Ferrari. We're gonna jump right in with styling though. Let's give this thing a quick pause. Door handles leave something to be desired. Those door mirrors? Those are odd. Very odd. And that bonnet scoop looks kind of cool. So you know what? We'll give it an extra bonus point in the styling category for that. But the rest of the car, it's very bland, very basic. It's the sort of thing that you expect from the 90s. Very bulbous and just soft and rounded. But that doesn't really match the era. That's maybe like 10 years newer, but still a decent looking car. Unpause. Okay, let's uh, give this one a uh, good go through here. So, probably for styling, we're gonna give this one a 5 out of 10. It's very middle of the road. Oh god, oh god, oh god. I, I meant to go down here. Oh shit, I... I meant to do that. Oh dear. Well, let's finish off our... Uh, oh god. Actually, you know what? Yeah, let's do this next part on the... Oops, the daisies. Oh dear. Should I leave a note for the tree owner? <laughs> let's see how this one does on dirt whilst we finish off doing the fill score here. So styling didn't do particularly good, but let's move on to acceleration. It's not huge compared to modern day cars, and it's not good compared to its predecessor. So, I don't know. This one just doesn't really shock me a whole lot. Though, still, nine seconds is nothing to be sneezed at. It is a big V8. And with a price tag of $50,000, you'd expect considerably more from this thing. So the acceleration gets a 3 out of 10. As for the handling, I mean, it's not skittish, it's not scary. Uh, let's uh, try a high speed corner. As on the dirt there, you saw that this thing handled pretty well. Okay, I will try a high speed corner when I can actually get fast enough to go around a corner. You know what? It's got a nice balance of understeer to oversteer. So... You know what? It's pretty good. It's just, you're gonna have to try really hard to actually get the speed up to uh, fully test out the handling of this car. Oh, dear God, that was scary as hell. So we're gonna give this one probably a seven out of 10. Pretty good, no Ferrari, but a lot better than a lot of cars. As for the fun factor, it's loud, so that's fun, but that's about it. It gets a three out of 10. As for the cool factor, you're dealing with a similar sort of thing. You've got a very peculiar engine. People do not like change. A 60 degree V8 that doesn't really particularly accelerate a whole lot, and the fact that it's quite small, it's only a 4.6 liter, this is not going to be uh, having people knocking at your door asking like, are you willing to sell your car? I want to buy it. <laughs> so it's probably only going to get about a three out of 10 because it's also from that 90s era of the bulbous look, which yet has not been made uh, people's like list of good looking retro styles yet. As for the trackability, you know what? This thing handles pretty good for the track, I would assume, but you're dealing with a really low amount of power. So you've got a big trade off there. This car is also gonna be expensive to run on said track with like expensive tires. This thing probably guzzles down the fuel. So, it only gets a 6 out of 10. Pretty decent, but there's better cars out there. Especially ones that also sold for a better price than this one. But let's move on to features. I'm assuming this thing probably has a CD player for that price. Probably also got comfortable seats. Let's uh, make a Yui here and go back, because we don't want to travel on dirt quite right about now. We want to see what the uh, ride suspension looks like. Because I didn't really pay Pay, pay close attention to that. That is a very stiff ride. Mm, so that's not going to be particularly comfortable, though they probably do have comfortable seats in it. This thing is probably only going to get a 5 out of 10. As for quality, this is probably a very low production run. Much like that uh, Plymouth Prowler type car. What the heck? Did I just stall the car mid-corner? Mmm, so quality goes down even further. Yeah, this is not going to be a particularly well... Uh, appreciated car for its time. I mean, I don't think this thing is ever going to be appreciated. It's got the bulbous 90 design with that weird 60 degree V8. Ah, I'm going to say that the quality on this didn't really reach a second or third generation. So it's going to get a 5 out of 10. Uh, no, a 4 out of 10. This also has a quad cam. So the quality on that's probably also a little bit lower as well. As for practicality, the boot looks pretty good. You've got a lift hatch here. 
You've also only got two doors for what's probably a five-seater uh, sports car, so it's not particularly amazing. You're gonna struggle a little bit if you're gonna have a whole bunch of friends in your car, because if you're a muscle car owner, you're gonna be taking all your friends out, probably, I don't know, whatever, taking them for a drive through the hills, just having fun in this car. So, it's probably only gonna get about a five out of ten. It's also, your back seat's probably gonna be very squished, you're probably not gonna have kneecaps by the end of, like, a good long hard drive. Okay, stop with the engine stalling, please. As for value, this is not good value, especially when it was new. This thing is only going to get a 2 out of 10 for value. It's not great in any regard, apart from its handling, but is that really worth that much money? I don't think so. As for ongoing costs, I'm assuming the support for this vehicle and this engine is going to be really low. So it's only going to get probably a 3 out of 10, because it's also probably going to guzzle the fuel and destroy these tires quite a bit. Oopsie daisies. Oh, bugger. Yikes. Well, that fender's going to be very hard and rare to come by, so that's going to have to be a paintless repair. So its overall fill score is nothing that we're going to be excited by, but at least it's not atrocious. All right, let's move on. Now we have a car from 1988. This is ubiquitous with cheap, mobile transport to keep the masses moving. And here's the sports version. I'm a little bit concerned. If you don't watch my stuff, you won't know that this is fake aerodynamics and this is fake aerodynamics. So this thing doesn't actually have any aerodynamics, just a little bit extra drag, but it does look really cool. Let's first take the budget version around a little bit. Yeah, let's turn this on here and see what our 0 to 100 is. So this has a very boring little four-cylinder single overhead cam engine. Now we're going up a little bit, so it's going to struggle. Oh dear, are we going to reach 100? Okay, we reached 100. Awesome. Oh shit! I was looking at the speedo too much. Yikes. But even the creator called this a boring car, even if the styling does look pretty cool on the front. This one, however, I think looks much better. Really aggressive with these extra little wing details on there. And this one has a twin cam EFI version engine. Okay, you know what? Maybe this thing wants to do a burnout to get this thing up to speed. So this one has double the power. So we're going to expect, what, half the acceleration time to 100? Oh, wow, that was actually pretty decent. Let's uh, try that again. A little bit of a uh, accelerator of a feather as we try to get this thing in the power band and accelerating away. What was the last one? It was 14 seconds. This one did it in eight seconds for a little hatchback, naturally aspirated, mind you. you get the feeling this was done by a tuning house, something like your spoon, because if, if I'm gonna be honest, it looks a lot like a Honda, but also Hondas look good. So I'm not really complaining. I'm just kind of pointing out a matter of fact. I am probably going to give this one, though, a bonus point for, like, the effort they went to to make the base version before they made this one. A really cool backstory to it. I do like it. And the fact that the styling all pretty much seems to fit the era. Era? era? I'm not sure. Whatever. The uh, design cues of the day. Though the front, though, does look a little bit more like it's meant to be running a turbo with a big intercooler. Still looks pretty awesome. So let's just jump ahead and quickly give this thing a bit of a fill score. We're gonna start with styling. This really does have that retro kind of styling look. I get the feeling that the resale due to its styling alone is going to be pretty decent. I do love the old Honda CRXs, so this one's kind of in that sort of area of just really awesomeness. Cute little hatchback type uh, sports car. This one I'm going to give a 7 out of 10. Actually, let's have a quick look at what we're running under here. So it is front wheel drive, okay. And then the rear looks like we have good cheap suspension in there, so they have put some effort into it. They haven't just gone ahead and given the thing double wishbone or whatever in there, so that's pretty good. The front is double wishbone, so that's uh, kind of what you'd expect, I think. I don't know. I don't have a whole lot of front wheel drive cars. Anyway, let's continue on down the road here. Oh god, okay. Little bit skittish there. You know what, the handling... Okay, the thing does like to get a little bit tail happy. A little bit more than what you would want from a small car, but this is the sports version. And it is very susceptible to handbrakes. This is really good. So the acceleration, I mean, 8.1 seconds, it's not a blistering supercar. So that, the acceleration is probably only going to get a 6 out of 10. It's not uh, particularly amazing, 
but it has that feeling of being fast because it's these old cars where everything is just a little bit more raw. The handling though is so much fun. Oh, okay, well we went a little bit wide there, but that was my fault for going in there too high. But that handbrake, it just handles it so well. I just want a handbrake every corner in this vehicle. My God. That's gonna go for fun factor, but for handling this thing, well, let's give it a good high-speed corner now. Okay, oh, okay. Hmm, maybe this thing doesn't do particularly well. Let's skip ahead to the next corner. Here we go. Oh, okay, okay. Oh, whoa, boy, howdy. Okay, so not particularly great at high speed. Oh, dear God, not great at high speed at all. This thing is probably gonna get a six out of 10. But for the fun factor, moving right onto that, we're gonna refresh this damage here. Oh, we're gonna go on dirt. Yeah, that'll be fun. The fun factor in this little beastly car. It's gonna be really, oh, come on Gearbox, pick a gear, please. For flip's sake. All right, so fun factor is gonna be really high in this thing. This is gonna be really fun. Just maybe not going around corners. This gets an eight out of 10. It's a little naturally aspirated engine. Your throttle response is pretty good. It's the sort of car you're really gonna enjoy. Oh dear God, no. The cool factor though for this engine is gonna be really high because anybody that's in the know, much like the Honda S2000, they're gonna know that this engine is a really good engine for such a small car. It's a little quad throttle body, four cylinder. Okay, right. Screw you game. I'm picking the gears from now on. You cannot be trusted apparently. So the cool factor is probably going to be quite high, but anybody that's not really in the know, they're going to think that it looks a little bit sporty, but they're not going to know much about it. So the cool factor doesn't really have a wide reach. So you've got that trade-off there of like, is it cool or is it not cool? And I don't know. It's really hard to tell because you try to impress a girl with this car and they're going to be like, it doesn't have a V8. Like, is it really that cool? So it gets a six out of 10, which I mean, I'd love to give it more. I think it's pretty cool, but does everybody else? I don't know, there's a real big trade-off there. As for the track ability, if you get this thing to short tracks and not really on a drag strip at all, this thing's gonna be pretty good. So I'm gonna give it a seven out of 10, which gives it a fairly good weekend score for such an old car. But then again, this thing also does have moderately stiff suspension. Not the stiff of the suspension, but it's not soft by any chance. So I get the feeling that our daily scores are not going to be particularly great. So let's do a quick comparison here. And the comparison we're going to do is price. The base model here costs $17,400, which is a lot. It should not cost that much. But move on to the sports version here. And this one is $19,600, which is what you'd kind of expect to pay in today's money for a car that would be around this sort of thing back in the day for like in today's, whatever, you get the idea, you know what I mean. Today's money, that's a terrible price because the car's not particularly great compared to the new cars, but compared to like uh, the old cars in today's money, this one is a good value car. So we're gonna start with features. This thing probably has a tape deck at most and maybe climate control, I don't know. It's really hard to tell what's in there because there is actually no interior at all. But it does have really cool C, uh, uh, cool alloy wheels, so that's kind of cool. Maybe they're magnesium, probably just alloys though. I do like it, but this car has to get a three out of 10. Compared to modern day cars, like the original creator of this uh, score system. I mean, I'm the original score creator of this system. Yes, yes I am. <laughs> Let's move on to cupboard. This thing is not particularly comfortable. It's got fairly stiff suspension. The seats in here are also fairly basic to keep that price low. This is only going to get a 5 out of 10 for comfort, especially comparing it to modern day cars with all of their creature comforts. So that brings us to quality. They are a good manufacturer, this brand, as most of the Japanese cars of this year are high quality. But this is probably going to be a lesser produced engine considering that the thing's got open intake manifold here. That's gonna be easily damaged and also not particularly easy to uh, keep maintained. I do like it though. This is a really cool car, but the quality is only going to get probably a seven out of 10, considering that the car is quite aged by nowadays. This is what, 33 years old now? Boy, 
Yikes, that's a pretty old age now. It's getting up there. You're getting to that point in time where parts are starting to get really hard to find and everything's starting to break apart. Like the rust, if there's any rust in here, it's probably done a really horrible job on it. As for practicality, you've got a fairly big boat there. The rear seats are not going to be particularly spacious or particularly well endowed. So it's only going to get a six out of 10 because it is really nippy to get around town still. As for value, these things have probably helped the value a huge amount. And with the rise in prices for these sorts of cars, if you're gonna buy one now, it's horrible. But if you bought one previously and you're wanting to sell it, then it is great value. But I'm gonna suggest that most people are gonna be looking at value from terms of wanting to buy it. And I cannot say that this thing's value is particularly great. I'm gonna give it a four out of 10, especially considering that the original version was not good value at all in any way whatsoever. <laughs> oh boy. The ongoing costs though are hurt by the engine, but also helped by the fact that this thing doesn't have particularly chunky ass tires. They're not small, but they're not huge. And also helped by the fact that this thing is probably still quite good on fuel if you're not revving it all over the place. But compared to modern day cars, it's not particularly great. So it's only going to get a four out of 10. Add that all up and I don't know, I do love this car. I'm gonna give it a bonus point. Wait, did I already give it a bonus point? I'm not sure, but I do love this car. And I would like to, before we leave, uh, just say to you, due to conflicts in car save files, I am not going to be uh, reviewing any car that does not have a unique name. But for now, I will catch you guys next time when we do more reviews of your cars. And I'm gonna, just enjoy this car a little bit as we wind down and wind out this video. Oh god! I really do appreciate that you guys have helped uh, elevate my videos. My previous uh, two have done really well. One considerably more than the other, breaking a lot of records for me in terms of like the speed in which I get views. But uh, yeah, I uh, hope you guys do subscribe if you're new to here, though I'm assuming all of the new viewers have already left. This is just for the probably returning viewers. I do appreciate each and every single one of you, except for like you, you know who you are. Yeah, you, I'm talking about you. I don't appreciate you. <laughs> I'm joking. Anyway, I'll catch you guys next time. Goodbye. Oh God, it's, it's, oh dear God. Oh, whoops, I didn't notice the log there. Eee.